Um, one of the greatest things just lately that I got is um, sin is abandoning the presence of the Lord. We're supposed to walk in his presence at all times. And sin means we just abandon the presence because we've chosen to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, not from the tree of light. We've chosen our way and not his way. So um, just, you know, I think you can find anybody to speak down to people and, and be critical, but we're to speak, we're to build up everybody. And listen, you can find something good about everybody. Uh, every restaurant we go to, I always ask for the manager, and I always tell the manager what a great job the waiter or waitress did, and I always, I always compliment the manager. And it's, um, it's, it's kind of in some ways a little bit mean because if you, it's really funny, but it shouldn't be. But if you ask for a manager in a store or a restaurant, they one, they don't want to come out, and two, it goes around the whole group and everybody's looking at you like. Oh, did I serve them? And they're all scared because 98, 99% of people who speak to managers complain. Listen, you can always find something good to say. And believe me, I've had the challenge of trying to find something good. But the Lord showed me years ago, we were in a steakhouse. We, we steak out there, not fish, because we're out in the middle of nowhere. But anyway, landlock. we're landlocked. Um, he showed me that when I called for the manager and so, spoke to the manager and told them what a great job my waiter or waitress did, and I appreciated the food was good, that his attitude changed. He went back. He told the cooks what a great job they did. They got a change of attitude. Then the waiters and waitresses in the whole place, and he showed me just God by one, you. God showed me just by one compliment, I changed the atmosphere of the restaurant. So that's one of kind of my thing that I do now in stores, in restaurants. I don't leave a restaurant without complimenting, except I've left a couple of restaurants just since so being here. I think I'm tired. <laughs> no, you didn't see me, but I did downtown. I was in the, when I went to the bathroom, I went to the kitchen. Okay. I and I asked, the kitchen. you stopped me in the kitchen seat. I went. Yes, I went. Uh -huh. <laughs> And I told them, I said, it's great, we've never been here, and I, I complimented them. Doesn't take much, and it changes the atmosphere. Y'all live in paradise, by the way. What a great place and a great month of people. We went to the governor's place for breakfast. And so we eat breakfast, and this table next to us is laughing. They're in a laughing place. They are loud. And, and, she, and she looks over and says, I choose the quiet. Quieter. Quieter. And I'm actually enjoying it. I think, what if I can go over there and sit with them? <laughs> <laughs> they were having more fun than us. So anyway, it was good. And she, you didn't really get an attitude. You kind of looked at me. No, I know you didn't. We didn't either one. We all got, well, I think we were envious because we wanted to get to get really hot. Uh, uh, but anyway, we didn't get an attitude. Well, we didn't get an attitude. We were envious. We didn't get an attitude. 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 We didn't get an and then this waitress brought us this ginormous cinnamon roll, this big, and said, uh, that table over there bought this for you. No kidding. So, man, what a place. I, I'm <laughs> <laughs> that don't happen in Kansas. But in Maine, I'm telling you, it happened down there. Okay, yeah. Okay, have going. Have okay. Ball, okay. the next one is always speak to the person. Uh, we were with some people today. And I had prophesied, and that person was telling me uh, something more about the other person. I said, no, look to them. You're speaking to them. So you need to speak to the person and tell them, because you're speaking into their, into their spirit. Even when I do children, like, did you see me when I prophesied over Catherine Carroll? I, I prophesied to her. You, you, I, I challenge y'all to pray for children. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, they focus in on you. And it's just amazing. You can see the word of God going in them when you start speaking the word of the Lord. And God says you will be a, a, a giant of a person. You're going to speak life to people. It was, no matter how old they are. Y'all saw her last night. You hired her. They said, oh. So it's very important to do it to your children, your grandchildren, uh, 
anybody God gives you work for. Okay, the next one is always promote intimacy with the Lord. And it's not so much about accuracy. It's about God's wanting to speak to all of us and having an intimate relationship with us. That's what prophecy is, just speaking to God. But, but what we're to do is like promote intimacy between God and them. God wants to tell them how much, and if they can't hear him say how much he loves them, then he will use us to speak to them, to have them reconnect. So promote intimacy, promote that relationship with the Lord, okay? I don't allow my teams to identify five-fold offices, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. And the reason why I don't have them do that, because in our meetings, I think kind of like this, we have people from all different churches, all different understandings, all different doctrines and belief systems, and oftentimes, if you you might see a shepherding heart or a pastor's heart uh, on somebody, and if you if you call them a pastor, they might think they need to go buy a building and, and start a church. When really they might have a shepherding heart, and they're supposed to shepherd their family or maybe a home group. But but and so you got to watch your verbiage. Um, an apostle, oh my gosh, or a prophet. They might be a very strong prophetic person, but if you call them a prophet, honestly, honestly, that can start them on a, on a road of, of pain and destruction because if they have not walked through the process of, of allowing uh, Jesus to be worked in them, they will bring a lot of pain and destruction, not only on themselves, but on other people. And I, you might have met some of those people who don't have the love of Jesus and God has not worked himself in them. And so you, be, you can very easily change your verbiage up. The Lord might say, you know, man, they're, you're a prophet. Well, you don't have to say you're a prophet. You just say you have a real strong prophetic gifting. You have a real strong revelation. The strong revelation you need to focus in. So you can change your verbiage to be able to call them into their destiny, but you aren't putting them into a box. Okay, so I don't let him do that. Uh, uh, Graham Cook, I don't know if you know him, he was a prophet from, uh, from England, been around doing it for a lot of years. He says, we've heard him two different times. One time he said it takes 14 years to make a prophet. The next time we heard it was 18 years. So, I guess, <laughs> so it, you know, if you pre, I think a lot of people who's had strong prophetic giftings and probably a, a prophetic or a prophet call on their life, in their immaturity or in their youngness, if somebody calls them that, and she's seen them and we've seen them, usually the people we see that's the most messed up, somebody told them they were a prophet. And we know that only God can call you to that office, but then it's time to, 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 to procure you, develop you, you know? And, they, and they're weird. I mean, not weird, they usually just really messed up because they think there's something that they're not. So, go ahead. Okay. Um, I, I also encourage them not to give directive words like in three months you're going to move to Argentina. That's just, that can cause havoc. Now, you can use, what I use is I say seasons. I see a different season coming up that, that might promote a move. But I don't give directive words because once again, if they don't cooperate with what God wants to do in their lives, and they pack everything up, sell everything, and move to Argentina, then who are they going to blame if the season's wrong and if life gets miserable? You. And you don't need the word curses. So use seasons. I see a different season coming. I think there's change coming, and God wants you to embrace it. So um, I don't identify the gender of upcoming births. Why? Because you could be wrong. And I don't know. This is just a Ruthie thing. You know, I kind of think like if we're talking about, you know, uh, you know, if it's a boy or a girl, you know, and it's not, you know, sometimes I wonder if that causes some gender identity, you know, I don't know. But that's just, <laughs> this is just a Ruthie really thing. I just tell them, I, I um, anyway, don't give specific time elements. I have given specific time elements twice in the 20 years that we've been prophetic. And when I, I had a specific time element for a man, I went to him first and I said, man, I just feel like this is supposed to happen. Should I share, share this with him? And he gave me the go ahead. And I, fear and trembling, I said to this man, 
it was either three months or six months. And what was interesting, I said, in your in your job, you're going to, in, in three months, let's say three months, in three months there's going to be a shift and you're going to get uh, the next, I can't remember what I said, the next, promoted. you're going to get promoted to a job that uh, that you don't think, that you're not qualified for or something. I can't remember exactly what I said to him. I came away in fear and trembling. I thought, oh God, oh, help me. Well, I found out, and then somebody told me he's in the military. And I went, oh, dear God, I have really. But next time we saw him, what well, you can explain. Well, I don't know about us. Why did I tell you somebody might know he was an enlisted man? So usually enlisted men do enlisted men's jobs. Well, he was promoted to a, a job that an officer had done. He, he was the first enlisted man to do an officer's job. So it was. So, really a radical promotion. Yeah, and so I was right, but I, I was scared. I, Can you I, hear me, Valerie, on that thing? Yeah. Oh, get closer to you. Get closer to me, uh -huh. Barbara. Uh -huh. You might bring a game show or something. Okay. <laughs> Always honor the person you're ministering to. Always honor them. Keep confidential any personal information disclosed. What I do, um, I don't know if you saw me tonight, and I've done it, I did it last night. Oftentimes, I don't prophesy over people in front of other people. If I get something, I think, would I want that spoken in front of everybody else? I am very aware that oftentimes it's not a good thing to do it in front of people. And so we'll just, you know, let's go, you know, let's go over here and let's do it. It's just, you just need to honor people. Um, don't if you're prophesying don't get into public deliverance now i don't know how it is up here it's kind of calmed down in kansas but it used to be when you prophesy because of the word of the lord would go in especially in groups sometimes there'd be a, a manifestation of other things demonic. a demonic uh, would start manifesting and it's like a big show for the enemy he wants everybody to focus on that and get everybody distracted so we were in a big meeting of about well, I don't know, 60, 70 people, and we were prophesying, and and uh, I didn't know this, but somebody in the back was starting to manifest, and so they came and got me, and Jerry went on with the meeting, and I just got it calmed down. They, it was actually a Mennonite church, and they had never seen anything like this. So I just got it calmed. I got the, the whole situation calmed down, but the word of the Lord had gone forth, and it stirred up some demonic. So, um, you know, that's the enemy's thing is to get everybody's attention on him. And I just don't put up with it. I just say, you know, this is about the Lord. So, um, hand placement, like I said earlier, always ask them if you can touch them. And um, for a long time, I don't know how it was here, but it was kind of like a charismatic thing. Let's pray for these people. And 10 people would converge on them and lay hands on them, which this is one of my pet peeves. It's a Ruthie thing. I think that there was a whole lot more transference of spirits yes, than, and then anybody getting prayed for or healing. And so I am very cautious about um, laying hands on and cautious about doing the whole joint effort thing. I just, I'm not, that's a Ruthie thing. I'm not into that. Um, be, uh, always be clear about the level of revelation you receive. Um, I see, I sense, uh, an angel woke me up last night and told me to tell you, you know, get off your rear end or something, which I'd, then I'd say, well, how come the angel didn't tell me? Was I not listening? You know, why would the angel come to you and not to me? So you need to be clear about the revelation, how you received it. You know, I just had a dream and I'm sensing that maybe it's for you, if not, you know, or this is what I saw or, uh, you know, allow the other person to be able to take it or leave it. It's not, you aren't anybody's Holy Spirit. You're a mailman. You're just a mailman. All you're doing is receiving something and giving it. Now, I don't know if you guys, but many people I know receive bills in the mail, right? So the mailman comes and puts bills in your mail, but he doesn't come the next day or stand over you to see next week. the next week. Did you pay that bill? Did you bill? pay that bill that came to you? A mailman just comes and delivers and then goes and gets more and then brings more, right? Well, that's what we are. We're just mailmen. We just receive and give, and then it's not, we are Nehemiah's Holy Spirit. We are God. We're, that's up to, you know, we just delivered and then go on. 
And if you get stuck thinking somebody needs to do what the word went, then you're you're trying to be somebody, you're trying to be God. And I don't I don't think there's any more room in the Trinity for any of us. I think we just need to let God be God. You've delivered it. Let God deal with it. He knows He knows better than us. If, if what happens, it's a really a uh, uh, subtle uh, attack of the enemy on prophetic and intercessors. Say you're praying and you get some real detailed stuff for your church. And uh, so you go into the, what we uh, counsel you to do is to pray over it and then tell the pastor either to write it out or give it to the leader, whoever's in charge of that ministry. And then basically you give it and leave it. Are you listening to this? You give it and leave it because if you say, uh, if you go tell uh, Mary Jo, hey man, I got this word for this church and they need to do this. And then Mary Jo said, you know, and you tell everybody you else, tell everybody and, everybody else and that becomes and gossip and, and that isn't right. And then if you don't, if you don't uh, let go of it, like if you, even, even for, uh, we'll say, okay, even for Nancy's ministry, this ministry, you're part of it, you come and you, you work at it and you get something for the ministry. Uh, your we're, your job, I don't care if you're the number two person in the, in the thing or what, your job is to give it to her, give it to God, and pray and then go on. <coughs> Leave it. Because, see, if the leader, you can come tell me, as pastor, you need to do this, this, and this, and, and you, don't know, you don't know all I know. You don't see all I know. And it might happen down the road, but it may can happen for years or months. And my wife got some stuff for this church, and she she's been teaching this for years. She almost got. I told her they they do something. You know, she didn't tell anybody but me, but she knew. Uh, God the Lord was teaching me yeah, that I had gotten that. this word for this church, and I'd given it. And then when it came up for a vote, I'm like, they just having problems financially I, I or something. I couldn't believe. I, I was like, I told, God, I told him what God said. I can't, you know. And it was kind of like, uh, what do you teach? And I went, oh. See, but if you get hung up on that, then you won't get anything. Oh, else. you get an attitude about How what they're. We keep delivering mail if we hung up on whether they yeah. need to do the and mail. And so an intercessor can get an attitude. You can get an attitude. You can take offense, and it wasn't. You're just, just supposed to go leave it and then go get more. And an intercessor needs to go get more. And if you get clogged up with what's not been done with what you got originally, and you might not have the full understanding. We talked about that someplace today about oftentimes our prophetic words, we think we know what they mean. But I'm telling you, after 20 years in the prophetic, what you 27 think... 27 years. 20, I'm not that old. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, I must have started really young. Uh, if you... What, what we think is... I would tend to say all the time is not what God's saying. We're trying to bring Him into our image instead of making us into His image. So our understanding, any of the prophetic words we got, I think I know what it means, but we, in fact, let me just tell you, a year ago, two years ago, we got a word from Tom Hardiman from Morningstar, gave us a, a fairly specific word, and we jumped on it. Well, things didn't quite go the way we thought they were going to go, at least the way we thought the word was. And so we had to go back and revisit the word, and we went, oh. I think we interpreted that a little bit wrong, you know. And so it was a, even after all these years, we jumped on something we thought what it was, and it wasn't. And so, uh, of 26 years after teaching and training in this, and we get a word, and we just man grab it and go. Uh, ha we got him to send it to write it out, but we read it and quickly, and then it was about moving and stuff like that. We got a real estate lady in our church and started looking for another house. And uh, after we re-examined the word, uh, I started getting more from the Lord. So that's why it's very important. Just listen to this. We've been doing this a long time, right? Why would we go? We wasted a lot of time looking at houses, I think. But we got to go know the real estate lady yeah. we love very much. We yeah. got to know her and her husband really well. <laughs> and uh, so, so God used it. All things work together for the good. If you, But... Uh, uh, a lot of things said. Uh, one of the things that was said, I'll, t I'll tell you this one, because I actually got to talk to Tom about this. He said, because see, it can mean a lot of, can, can words mean a lot of different things? It can, right? Was somebody tell me today about a bundle? Uh, bounty. Bounty? Yes, yeah, you're going to have two years of bounty? 15 weeks of bounty. 
And so they thought, man, and it was bounty towels. They had 15 weeks of bounty towels. So it wasn't the bounty that they thought. So anyway, he told me, he said, I see uh, uh, Eureka is where we live. I found it. And he said, I see a dead end. I saw a railroad uh, coming and, and, and the sign said dead end. Okay, what you going to think? Tell me what you think if you got that kind of word. Railroad sign coming, dead end. Huh? Our ministry is coming. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's true. But could it mean that I'm going to be there until I'm dead? Or the ministry will be there until it's, it dead ends right there? We're going to die there? Or does it mean we're not going any further east? Doesn't mean you have to wait for the train. That in, but maybe you get, that you're not going to take a train anymore. Maybe going to take a plane. See, there's so much. So that's why you really need to have people, especially people, that know you and pray with you. And uh, boy, that, I think that's one of the best things that happened to us: getting that word and just running with it, and then finding out, hey. So I've actually had time to talk with him. We think it's timing in that. Well, one of the things he said, we God gave us this commercial building. So he's, he's given the word, and then he said, at the end, he said, and I'll pray for a buyer for your building. Now, he didn't, God didn't say sell the building, and God, he just said he see out of his own. So part of it was God, and part of it was just him. So I put out a sign for building for sale, created a whole stir in a little 2,500 people town we live in. You know, hey, you're showing my building down Yeah, we were talking about And everybody that. talking to town, and our business was there, and then, well, you don't have a business and coffee house and a church. Church people got, one of the guys got mad. I'm afraid you're banning us, man. And some of the people left. It was not good. Anyway. Because we just grabbed a hold of it. Anyway, so I'm in the shower. How many get to hear stuff in the shower? Man, I take most words in the shower. If you get a shower word or bathroom word, you can probably take that to the bank. <laughs> this is good. So I'm in the shower, and the Lord says to me, and I've heard this a few times. You know, I don't like hearing it, but I, I'm glad I hear it. He said, did, did I tell you to sell the building? I didn't even answer it. When I got out of the shower and got my clothes on, I went down and got that sign. Because <laughs> he didn't say anything about selling the building. See? So, so we'll try to run ahead and make this thing happen, and it, it's a mess. So you have to really be tuned and have to have people that can speak into your life and pray about stuff. You know, we we since re examined the word with Tom. He, he came this time. He comes every year. Bruce said, Jim, he didn't drop so over us. Uh, yeah. I think he probably thought, I don't know. But he didn't. You know, he ministered over some people, but didn't he didn't. He didn't do us. <laughs> I really didn't care. I, was, I don't want any more of them. He said, I was sitting there asking the word of the Lord about you to give me a word while he ministered. I thought, phew. Okay. And he talked about our headquarters being somewhere else. But anyway, so you have to. Okay, the next one. You can't is, make them happen. You about done? Yeah. We be clear as to what you know in the natural. Okay? We have people come in our meetings. Somebody might say, I'm bringing my sister that's a worship leader. I don't prophesy like, well, I just see worship over you, that you're worshiping. I don't, I don't use what I know in the natural and make people be impressed because that's a lie. And so what we'll do is if we know a little bit about something, uh, didn't they say that you're a worship leader? You know, we might use it, but we're very clear of that, what we know in the natural and, and what, what we're getting from the Lord. And the last one is always ask questions of the Lord. Let me tell you, this can really trip you up. If you're prophesying and you're getting something like, um, what, mo uh, uh, you're a mother to many or something, you don't, you don't, you're getting that and you're starting in, you don't go, you mother, you got lots of kids. And they'll go, no, I don't have any. And you go, Ugh. and you choke up and you're sunk. You don't do that because it might be a spiritual mother. So don't try to justify or validate what you're getting. It really pulls back the power of a prophetic word that's coming from the Lord when you uh, uh, try to get validated that you're right. It doesn't matter whether you're right. It, it's it's not about you. It's about him. Okay, and I was just thinking, what else was I thinking right there? Oh, don't try. Glad I can help you. With yeah, that. thank you. <laughs> try not to uh, qualify your word. Try not to say, 
well, this is just a little word. Uh, you know, I just, I was just, it's just, because you just pulled the punch back from a word from the Lord. Well, this is just, you know, I, some, I'll tell you, I have a word that I, I've had for probably 15 years. I went over to Missouri to sit in on a class, and, and there was a team, and they crossed out over me, and this woman said, I clear as day, I can tell you we have tons of prophetic words. I still remember this word. She said, two steps forward. She said, I heard the Lord say, two steps forward, three steps back. How's that sound? Doesn't sound very good, does it? I didn't even hear her interpretation. You know what the Lord said to me? I want you two steps forward in ministry, but I want you three steps back in me. Because if you don't spend more time with me, your two steps forward in ministry are worthless. See, interpretation. It could have said, I'm not getting anywhere. I'm actually backing up. But the Lord spoke to me and said, I need you to spend that much time with me to have the two steps forward in front of people. And I, that word stays with me, stays with me, stays with me. Now, if she would have said, well, I don't know, I this might be a, I don't know, it's just a little word, it doesn't make any sense, but let me, you know, you have just pulled back something God wants to say to somebody. You have, you have judged the word that might be the word that actually hits them like nothing ever before. So you got to be very clear and don't nullify it. Don't, you don't judge the word God wants to say to them. You don't put yourself in, in it. You just speak it and, and then let, let the Lord do it. It's not like a, I tell my students, this is really funny. I tell them all the time, it's not about you, it's about him. So just before we left on our trip, they were praying for us. And some smart aleck in the group said, remember, it's not about you, it's about him. And they all broke, broke up. About it, so. Yeah, so that's, those are the protocols that I train my and I have not, I've only had problems once in all the years where something happened, but they followed these pretty, the protocol pretty closely and it, it brings life to many people. Hey, you're yeah. on. Oh, I am? Yeah, what you got? Um, I don't know. So does anybody have any questions of anything I, any of that makes sense or? I tell you what, we are called to bring the kingdom of God on earth. And it's through words. It's through words that we say, we declare, we speak, we bring life. You either speak life or you... This is what I say. What's the scripture? Death and the life. Power. The power of death and life lie in our tongue. This is how I interpret it. Ruthie interpreted it. You either speak life or you summon demonic forces. So I either tell you you look good or I say... Man, you, you look, you don't, are you feeling okay? You don't look too good today. Well, I was feeling pretty good, but I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to go lay down. We have the ability to speak life. Or, to me, this is a very big interpretation. When I speak negative, it's like flies, you know, want to come and just swarm and, and, you know, bring death to people. And so we have that ability. We have the Creator God in us who can speak life, and we're to speak creative life into all people. Okay, I uh, don't know if that word it can be. The, it can be the smallest word and still still make a world of difference. And so it doesn't, it doesn't make. Yeah, I I told somebody this other day. I don't know if I I kept getting. I was look look at this woman. And, Bye, love y'all. See you next time. See you next time. See you next See you after. And, uh, anyway, I kept looking at this girl and kept hearing this word. I wanted you to do Joni Ames thing about that woman coming to okay. me. Okay. Anyway, I kept looking at this girl and I kept hearing the word marshmallow. Now, remember, remember this. There can be three parts to a prophetic word. Can be. Doesn't have to be. The main, main part of the prophetic word is the revelation. Is it something you saw? Is it a scripture? Is it a picture? Is it a word? You don't have to get anything else. The second part was what? Interpretation. The third part was application. So you get a revelation, interpretation, application. Now when I first started doing this in 1988, mostly we would get a revelation, a word of knowledge, 
uh, which will be sometimes an interpretation, very seldom got an application. Now, to me, an interpretation is a lot, a lot of times a word of knowledge, and the application is, uh, is uh, what to do. wisdom. It's what, what to do with it. And now I see it, I don't know about y'all, but God gives it all. seems like more than when I started in 1998. So, but you may just get the one word. So I'm looking at this girl, and I kept hearing marshmallow. I thought it was soft like a marshmallow. Or He's trying to interpret it. tastes good. You know, I'm trying to make it up. I'm, what is that? And I just, I couldn't get, it wasn't going. All I had was the revelation. So I just said, I just care. I did this. I said, I just keep hearing the word marshmallow. Two thirds crying. I thought, oh, man. <coughs> See, sometimes you think crying, all right, we've hit it. Well, it ain't always true either. But she said, when I was a little girl, that was my nickname. Her name was Marcella. So God, see God gives, why does God give prophetic words? Not to make you look good. Listen, right. if you get to be really good at it and you think you are, you start to stink it. <laughs> I told Ken last night, I gave him an awesome word. This Ken right here. That's one Ken, two Kens, three Kens, more. And, uh, <laughs> but he gave me an awesome word and he said, I'm, I'm just new at this. I said, I'm telling you what, most of the best words come from new people. Because they, they haven't learned how to mess it up. You know, and we're doing the shoe thing and stuff, and he, 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 he looked at my shoes and he said, I just seem polished. I thought, I don't like that word. <laughs> <laughs> it's polishing me. So. So you want me to tell the story? Yeah. So, I don't know, Joni Ames has been here. She's a good friend of ours, but she said that she was a morning star way back, and um, they were getting everybody to do prophetic one Sunday morning. And she kept looking at this woman, woman, and she... Somebody else was leading it, and yes, they told her. Okay, go ahead. Somebody else was leading it, and so she was looking at a woman, and they were saying, get words for people, and she looked at this woman, and she said, all I could hear was God say, I love her. And she said, well, God, can I have something more? And he said, well, just tell you that I love her. And she, well, God, can you give me, spam this a little bit, you know, give me something more, and just tell her I love her. So she went up to this lady. No, wait, the... the the instructor guy said, because she said, I, if, oh. you don't, if you don't give me more than that, I'm going to give yeah, it. Yeah, she wasn't going to That's what she it. told God. If you don't give me more than that, I'm going to give it. And then the teacher that was leading it said, I don't care how small the word is, you need to give it. So then she went up to the woman, and she said, I keep hearing the Lord say, he loves you. She broke all the pieces and uh, then told Joni, that she had been driving into church that morning and she crossed the river and she said she told the Lord if somebody doesn't tell if if I don't hear from you today that you, you love, love me, me when I drive back across the river I'm going to drive into, into the river and kill myself that's how powerful the words we speak are, are a lifeline to people. You don't have any idea what we can do by hearing his voice and being his, his you know, his mouthpiece and as hard it is, as it is for some of you to recognize his voice, there's many, many more people who don't, who, who don't even know to recognize his voice, who don't even know that God can speak. We are the lifeline. It's so very important. We are the lifeline that God uses his people to, to bring hope in life. 